Hello. My project is on the characterization of a putative prolyl endopeptidase from Alicyclobacillus acetoterrestris. What I was doing in this project was looking for a potential treatment for celiac disease. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder which, is, uh, which has attacks triggered by the ingestion of gluten. Now the only available treatment right now is a gluten-free diet, very difficult in Western diets. Now, prolyl endopeptidases, or PEPs, cleave proteins on the C-terminus end of a proline. They fall under the category of serine proteases, which cleave proteins, and the specificity here is for the proline residue. Now, gluten is a set of proteins that are rich in proline, especially the alpha-gliadin component, which is what triggers the autoimmune response when it reaches the small intestine. So, the idea is to find a PEP that can survive the harsh conditions of the stomach and break apart the gluten before it reaches the small intestine. Now there is some success that has been found with Aspergillus niger. It doesn't work for ingested food, but it does work for making beer gluten-free. So what I did in this experiment is I purified DNA from Aecidoterrestris then I designed primers for the gene of interest, that way I could amplify the PEP gene using polymerase chain reaction. The product, along with the PEP15B expression vector, went through a restriction digest and was ligated together. That way, E. coli could be transformed. Now, the large-scale E. coli growth was done, and the cultures were induced with IPTG. That way, overexpression of the PEP would happen. And once overexpression happened, the protein was collected using nickel NTA affinity chromatography, so I would get the pure PEP and nothing else. After that was done, kinetic assays were run, first using this substrate to test for PEP activity. There was also activity detected using this substrate for trypsin activity. And finally, to ensure that there was serine protease activity as a whole, the Pierce Quanticleave Protease Assay Kit was used, and in that kit, that's compared with a standard trypsin that is known to work. So, the results, as you can see here, from the 10% SDS page gel in the bottom left-hand corner, at 75 kilodaltons, there are strong bands in the E1, elution 1, and E3, elution 3 columns, which match up to the theoretical size of the PEP. Therefore, the PEP was purified and was able to be used for kinetic assays. Now looking at the top, you have at the left hand side a typical absorbance pattern for the kinetic assays with the H-alanine phenylalanine proline PNA substrate. So there is a quick drop right at the beginning but a slow increase in absorbance. It's not that much so very little activity is actually being detected. So to find out if, the, if everything was working, this was compared to Clarity Firm, a slow-acting PEP known to work from a Niger. And the results there are shown in the top right. As you can see, there is much greater absorbance and a much, a much cleaner shape to the curve. So this was also tested against a trypsin substrate and you can see the results in the middle of the bottom where there is very little change in the absorbance. Matter of fact, it's in the negatives for absorbance. Likely more noise is being detected than actual activity. Now with the Pierce Quantic Leaf Protease Assay Kit, once you take into account the Bradford assays used to determine concentration, although there are differences between the standard trypsin and my PEP, the activities are a very similar when the concentration is factored in. So, in conclusion, the PEP from Aecidoterrestris was, was successfully cloned and purified. Now, I was unable to detect significant PEP activity, but I was able to detect serine protease activity using the Quanticleave Protease Assay Kit. I was unable to detect significant activity from a trypsin substrate. So, likely, this is a serine protease, but with unknown specificity. Therefore, I have, would consider this a putative PEP rather than an actual PEP.